time I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Good afternoon. Welcome to his Pastor Speak. I am Minister Jerome Creighton. On behalf of my Bishop E.L. Warren and First Lady Ella Warren and the Amazing Cathedral Worship, I want to thank you for joining us today here at WTGR, waiting to Jesus return. But as we wait, we want to make sure we're doing the work of our Father to represent the Lord and Savior. Today, I'm going to be talking to you from the title, His Purpose, My Purpose, Keep Believing. His Purpose, My Purpose, Keep Believing. We have to understand we all have an assignment here on earth. We're not here to just live and die. We're not here just to go about our own little merry way doing whatever we choose to do. God has called us to do a work. He created us to do a work. As we stop and think, everything has a purpose. As I wear my glasses today, they have a purpose to help me to see better, far and near. Even the shoes I have on today has a purpose to cover my feet. If God made all these different things with a purpose, what about me and you? We too has a purpose. And today we're going to look at some things through scriptures, through word, so we can understand why God made us and what we are to do with this time we have here on earth, preparing us to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, in this time I want to thank you, God, for who you are. God, I thank you, Father God, for this day that would never come again. Let us apprehend this moment, God. Let us apprehend every word, Father God. Let this word be like a sword, as you say in your word, that will cut down to the very marrow of the bones, God. God, remove any hindrance, Father God, any distraction, Father God. Speak to that man, woman, boy, girl, young and old, through me today, God. I empty myself so I can be filled with the Holy Spirit today, God. We thank you, Father God, for this day and what it will mean for so many lives in your world for the kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and say amen. Amen. My first scripture today will be coming out of Genesis 2, 15 through 17. And we'll read as follow. Genesis 2, 15 and 17. It says, The Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it, and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded man, commanded man now, you are free to eat from any tree in this garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat, it was, you will surely die. Now God gave man a commandment to do some things. Put him in the garden to take care of it, but then he gave him instruction how to run the garden. Everything made, as I said, has a purpose. And just as everything made has a purpose, you have to have instruction how to run it and maintain it so it run at its top peak, top performance. You can get all of it out of it. And that's what God wants to do with us, his children. We have a purpose. And his purpose is for us to talk, live, and worship him. And through life, we get some distractions. We get some things that pulls us away. We get some things that talk in our ears and, and, and say things to us and call disturbance in our mindset and, and then in our hearts. And then for you know, we, we're not walking the same. We're not talking the same. We're not acting the same. We're not doing the things that we once was doing. Matter of fact, we're doing totally opposite of what God made us to do. And when I talk about this, I'm not talking about a book I read. I'm talking about a story that I read about somebody. I'm talking about my story. I, too, was that person. 
10 years ago, I just celebrated a 10 year anniversary. 10 years ago, December 7, 2004, I, Jerome Creighton, was contemplating suicide. Believe it or not, I was. I had come to my wit's ends. I had come to a point in my life that I didn't like myself. As a matter of fact, I didn't like myself even when I got in the mirror to wash my face. I, I didn't even like waking up in the morning because I knew I had to go through the same old routine of nothing. No purpose, no joy, no peace, no happiness. And I remember on a Wednesday night, uh, my wife had said that uh, after I bit out on a, on a two-week binge, if I'm not mistaken, of, of, of drinking and, and partying and, and smoking that crack cocaine and that marijuana, and I knocked on the door and she let me in and she basically said that she didn't sign on for this type of lifestyle and, and she was moving on and it, it crushed my heart. It, it, it made me stop and think what has happened to my life. And as I re-examined my life, it wasn't easy, it was painful because there were some things in my life that I had done to myself and to other people that made me feel ashamed. And after all that shame began to settle in, I, I felt like, why be here? Why continue to live on this earth? I'm hurting everybody, everything I touch, everything I do, it does not work. I'm broken. I can't fix myself. So let me go ahead and just check out. But the Holy Spirit, thank God for the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, came to me and said, where is that coming from? Now, I remind you, I wasn't living for God. I wasn't doing what I'm doing today, I promise you. But God did not forget about his son, Jerome Creighton. And he hasn't forgotten about you out there in TV land. He won't forget about you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God's always thinking about us when we're not even thinking about him. And he began to speak into my broken spots, my broken, my broken spaces, my broken issues of my life. He began to tell me that he still loved me, which was hard for me to believe at the time. He could remind you I was broken. I didn't want to hear nobody loving me because I didn't love myself. So how can someone love me when I don't love myself? So as I'm listening, crying, trying to figure out what I'm going to do from this point on, I cried out to God to help me. And God sent me by the way of Des Moines, Iowa. And as he sent me by the way to Des Moines, Iowa, I went to a program for nine and a half months. And God reminded me as I was going through this program, I get into my message. But I want to share this, build this foundation for you guys so you know that you're talking to someone that's been there, done that. And you're looking at a prime example of what God can do with a vessel. I brought something to the table, and God began to operate. And as he operated, he fixed, and, and he, he, he took away, and he added, and he, he, he gave me something that I never had, joy, because I had lost it. But after nine and a half months of being in Des Moines, Iowa, God spoke into my spirit once again. He said to me this. He said, a woman carried a child for nine months, and as she preparing to give birth, joy and excitement builds within her. And I'm not a woman by no means, but I heard a story that when a woman's giving birth, it's not the most pleasant feeling. But also the latter side of it, when they give birth and that baby, that male or female, that baby boy, baby girl come out and that nurse hand them to her, he or she to her, smile come on the face. Pain no longer is in a thought in her mind. And God said to me 10 years ago, I'm rebirthing a new Jerome in you. And every day I can see God rebirthing. Ha! Glory to God. A new Jerome in me. And I get so excited because I didn't see this coming. Me being on WTJR December 9, 2015, I didn't see that. But God, he saw that. So that lead me to believe that God had a purpose for me before I even knew he had a purpose. And once I come to know him more, my purpose began to come together. And I get excited about where I was, where he's taking me. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Satan is counting on you and I personally to remain lazy, carnal, and enthusiastic about the things that concern our Father. Satan is counting on you and I to remain carnal, 
enthusiastic, not excited about the things that are concerning I father. Matter of fact, I want to add this, mediocrity is no longer acceptable anymore. This half-hearted, want to do what God called us to do, this maybe attitude, want to do what God is calling us to do, this I'm going to go Sunday, but this Sunday I'm going to, you know, and I'm going to pray today and tomorrow I'm, that, no, no. That thing is no longer acceptable in God's kingdom. God is calling us forth so we can come out, we can go up and be with him. If you're with me, I want to hear you say amen right where you're at. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. God is here to pick us up today for where we are, no matter what you've been doing. Matter of fact, no matter what you're doing right now, God is here to pick you up out of that misery. The same way I was 10 years ago when he picked me up, and he's still picking me up today, and I'm so glad about it. And he want to do the same thing for you today out there in TV land. Never, never let the enemy talk you out of who God said you were from day one. God spoke to each one of us from day one when we accepted Jesus into our life. Although we might have backslide, we might not be right where we're supposed to be at. But always remember what God told you he's going to do. Because his word would not return void. His promises are still yes and amen. He's saying in his word that what he started, he's going to see it through to completion. We're not there yet, but God is not finished with it either. So we still got life. We still got purpose in us. And God can restore you back to your sanity. He can deliver you and he can put you back in right standing so you can run for him and you can do the things God calling you to do. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at another scripture. Psalms 84, 10 through 12. Psalms 84, 10 through 12. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Remind you now, we said we have a purpose with God. And God created us for a purpose. His, his purpose he created us for is with him. And I want to read and share with you what he say in Psalms 84, 10 through 12. It say, better is one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. Hallelujah. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun. Hallelujah. You know what a sun does? It shines bright. And a shield. The Lord bestowed favor and honor. Hallelujah. No good things. Hold on. Wait a minute now. Let me hold. Let me pause right there. Because that, that threw me for a loop. When I began to wonder, how can God take a mess up like me and call me to do all these things that he said he was going to do? Matter of fact, I remember God came to me in a dream. He showed me my dream that I would be ministering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you're going to be ministering. He said, you're going to be ministering to men's. And they're going to be listening to your testimony, and they'll be getting delivered one by one. And he showed me an auditorium filled up with men just weeping. Wow. Thank you, Holy. Wow. Thank you, God. Auditorium just filling up with men, filled up with men just weeping, hanging on my words, the words he had done in me through my pains, my trial, now through my joy and through my happiness. And these men are getting saved. And I looked and I thought to myself, I said, God, you got the wrong person. He said, no, I don't, son. I made you for this assignment. You're the only one that can do this. And that's what I'm saying to you today. You're the only one can do what God called you to do. You're unique in your own personal way. And God didn't make a mistake. And he's not making mistakes today in your life. Trust him and believe in what he told you. And we're still telling you today. Let's finish on. Let's finish this scripture. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things does he withhold from those who is blameless. Blameless. Stop blaming everybody for where you're at. Stop pointing fingers at people that didn't have anything to do with what you're doing. Quiet. Stop doing that. She done that, so I'm going to do that. 
He didn't do that, so I'm going to do that. Stop it today. Because as long as you're blaming, you will continue to stay where you are. But when you rise up, thank you, Jesus. When you rise up and accept responsibility for what you have done, then God can begin to operate. I was just in the hospital about two weeks ago from uh, um, issue of congestive heart failure. And it happened because I wasn't following God. I wasn't following the doctor's order. And I found myself in the hospital on Friday morning, uh, 6 a.m., in the mercy room. Barely can breathe. Once again, three years ago, I had the same thing happen here in Quincy. In the hospital, I see you for about five days. In the hospital, about a total of six or seven days. And God spoke to me then. And I knew what I was supposed to have been doing. But... I didn't listen. And as I did not listen, my body began to have complications. I was still eating things I wasn't supposed to be eating and not taking care of myself properly. And Friday morning, two weeks ago, my body began to shut down. My breathing began to get short. And thank God to my lovely wife. Hey, wife, I love you. She come to my rescue. She got me to the hospital, got me to the emergency room. They got some fluids in me, got me back stable. But I lay in the hospital for three days, and God spoke to me. He said, you have an assignment to do. I'm not done with you. But he reminded me that I have to follow instruction. And not just physically, but also spiritually. If I go forth and do what God's telling me to do in Matthew 6, 33, he said, if I seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness, then everything else will be added unto me. So I have a job to do. And in my job, my assignment, my purpose will be filled. And as my purpose be filled, my joy will come. As my joy will come, my knowing Jesus Christ will be oh, enormous. And I'll be able to tell people about the goodness of who he is and what he's capable of doing. He's a healer, TV land. He's a deliverer, TV land. He delivered me. And he wants to deliver you today. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 12 goes to say, O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. That's why I had to get TV land. I had to get to a point that I trust God. My wife couldn't fix me. My mom in Tennessee couldn't fix me. My brothers in my, in my circle couldn't fix me. But Jesus is the one that was able to fix me. I had to develop a, a mentality, as, as my bishop say, I cannot go back, I will not go back, I must go on with God. And that's where I'm at today. I cannot go back, I will not go back, I must go on with God. And in honor of uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, in reading his book, in his first two chapters, he asked a question. Where is the richest place in all of the world? And we can think of many places. We can say the, the uh, uh, gold mine, oil mines in Saudi Arabia, the, the diamond mines in Africa, the gold mines, wherever they're located. Now, ge geography buff, but you get, you get my point. But he go on to say, all those are great places. Yes, they fill with wealth. But he said that with the wealthiest place in all of the earth is the graveyard. And I stop and think, wow, the graveyard. He said, so many of us live and die and never tap into our purpose. We never accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So we live this life of just doing whatever we want to. And we never live a life of purpose. And that we don't live a life of purpose when we die, everything that God put in us from day one, when he saw us in our mom's womb, dies with us. We leave nothing behind. The people we, we're supposed to connect to, we never connect with them. The people we're supposed to reach, we never reach them because we never accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I want to speak to that man, that boy, girl, young or old, that's out there today, that might be still tripping over the same thing. They might be still looking for that answer in that, that 40 ounce, that bottle of Hennessy, in that crack pipe, in that meth world. I want to speak to you today 
and tell you this, that God is not looking at your sin. He's looking at your issue of life that lead to the sins. Every one of us that have traveled that road didn't see ourselves doing this. I know I didn't. In high school, I, I remember they come in and uh, had job had the job fair. And I, I, I never could remember seeing a table for an alcoholic, uh, for a drug addict, for, for, for a dope user, for, for prostitution. I never saw a career for that. But I found myself living that life like it was a career for 20 plus years. Didn't realize that I was out of the will of God, and that's why I was living that life. And I remember in Des Moines, and they done my intake as I come to my closing. And I done my intake, and they said, you're not an addict, you're not an alcoholic. You're a sinner that can be saved by grace. And they begin to tell me the story about this man named Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. That hung on the cross, that rose after three days after died on the cross. For me and for you. That died so I can be healed, sealed and delivered. So I can find my purpose through following him. And I asked him, I said, what you mean? Are you telling me that everything that I done done up to this very second, that day, in that office, with those pastors and those counselors, you telling me everything I done done, I can be forgiven for it? And they say, yes. i like, wow, this can't be true. And they tell me this story about how he hung on the cross and he asked God if this cup can pass from me, please. And God allowed his only son, as we can celebrate Christmas and, and his birthday, in honor of his birthday, his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and me. He said, I want you to say this uh, simple little prayer. And I like, all I got to say, a prayer? He said, yes, say a prayer. God will come in and remove all of those issues, bit by bit, day by day, and you'll begin to be whole again. Hey, let me say this. I had lost everything else, so I had to start gaining. My wife was done. I didn't have nowhere else to go. I'm in a homeless shelter. The story just goes on and on. So I said, hey, I'm down here rock bottom. It's time to come back to the top. So I said a prayer. And as I said a prayer, it's like years of weight lifting off of me. Thank you, Jesus. It's lifting off of me. As I begin to cry and weep and thanking God for not forgetting about me, for loving me through my sins, in my sins, as a matter of fact, and love me through them. I begin to find my joy, my peace, and that's what I have today. And that's why I'm here today. Tell you about the joy of the Lord, this peace that transpasses all understanding that Jesus Christ want to give you. I don't know what you've done, I don't know what you're doing now, but God does. And it's between you and him anyway. It ain't between no one else. It's between you and him because he made you. And he made you with a purpose. I want to ask you to come forth wherever you are and let Jesus draw from you what he didn't put in you so he can place in you what is supposed to be in you. So he can ignite that fire that once was burning. He can restore that joy that you have lost. He can remove all that double-mindedness, all that disturbance, all that dysfunction and give you peace. And then fill it with hope that can take you to another level. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that God said, I know a plan. I have a plan for you. A plan for your future. It's filled with hope. And that plan is still on the table today. As I said, for anyone, for any physician, doctor to do operation, you have to have a patient. God is calling you to his table today so he can operate on you. So he can remove those obstacles from your life. So he can plant a purpose in your life, a seed of purpose in your life that will grow as you study the word, as you find your good church, as you pray, as you 
Read your word and, and, and listen to God speak to you. That seed will grow. And then that seed is your purpose. Allow the Holy Spirit to quench your thirst today. You don't have to be hungry no more for what the world is offering you. Because you're not getting full. You're losing. You're losing every day when you offer, offer your life to the world. And it can't replace what God can give you. I want to ask that man, boy and girl out there in TV land. If that's you that I'm talking to. Don't care where you at. The spirit don't care. There's no distance between God and the Holy Spirit and his love for you. I want you to repeat out to me as I lead you in a sin and prayer. Today can be a new day for you. You don't have to go to bed tonight and not want to wake up tomorrow. You can go to bed tonight and be happy that you're able to wake up today, tomorrow. So let me lead you there. Say, Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins today. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask you to come into my life today. I ask you to restore me back to where I was. I ask you to make me your own. I ask you to cleanse me with your blood. I want to thank you for not leaving me nor forsaking you. I want to thank you for loving me in my tough time. I want to thank you for this word today that lifted my spirit. I want to thank you for WTJR. I want to thank you for all the men and women that's praying for me that I didn't even know. But God, I want to thank you, God, that today's a new day and I can move forward from this point on. And if you say that prayer, I want to welcome you into the, the kingdom. I want to welcome you into a family of believers that love you, that encourage you, that walk with you, that will hold your hand, that speak life into you, not death. But I, want, I don't want to just leave it there. If you don't have a church, find you a good church, a Bible teaching church, a church filled with anointing from Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to my church. I attend to here in Quincy, Cathedral Worship, 25th and Vermont. Bishop E.L. Warren and Lady Ella Warren. If you don't have a church on, we'd love to have you. I want to thank you today for allowing me to speak into your life. I want to thank God for this opportunity. Thank WTJR. Say God bless you. Merry Christmas and a happy new year in 2015. Bye-bye for now. And sweet is the way.